I guess I'm gonna start off by uh, saying hi, everybody. Nice to see you all. I hope uh, I hope you all had a wonderful uh, time. We haven't seen you till from December. It seems like forever. And and I will wish especially Emily a congratulation for her thesis. Now she officially have extra time on her hands <laughs> to come and <laughs> and share her expertise. Um, okay, so let me start by saying uh, today's agenda really, it was just to keep you up with what's happening, okay? Um, let me share my screen and we'll start taking a look on, take a look on the, uh, look what's happening in the uh, DED, the changes. So you see, these are all the changes that they were done for in the DED for the SEC 3 and 4 and 5, specific some course code. Now, obviously, uh, the documentation, uh, you if you go to the MEC site, to the ministry site, you'll notice that there's no more the 2017 program and DEDs. Now they were all changed automatically with the 2021 uh, DEDs. So whatever you had, previous DEDs now kind of, you'll see the changes. There's lots and lots of little details that were added and that made like a big commotions when it came to exams. You'll see. Now, uh, notice here, there's a bit of a history that I would like to maybe just talk about. Notice that before the way the program when was designed, um, the intention of the DED is to actually categorize the knowledge into three parts. A knowledge that you're supposed to know, a knowledge that you're using during the course, and a knowledge that you'll be tested on. And once you're tested on a knowledge, usually you're done, you don't get retested on it. But these ideal DEDs never made it, never made it public because of change of you know, vision, philosophy, chairs, whatever, these DDs never made it. So what happened, certain essential knowledge stayed in the program as floaters, and, you know, they were off, often got retested at different modules. So you see these two main topics were kind of floating around in the program, okay? So that's why when BIM came to do the exams of 5163 and 5173, they saw them there, they put them there, but progress, like the logical progression in the math program, these two topics shouldn't be there. They should be done in the 4273. So the only course that is the weird course is the CST, uh, the, 5150, uh, the 5150, I think if I'm not mistaken, the first one, um, that one that you see optimization and you'll see part of it uh, as geometric, uh, not uh, equivalent figures. Like it's a weird course that has bits and pieces and not many people actually teach it. But um, the majority of these two topics, now you will find them uh, moving from the 5173 and the 51, uh, well, the 5173 moving to actually 4273. The geometric transformation stayed also in the 5163, by the way. So these are the two um, uh, main uh, main changes. So let's see here. Okay. So notice here um, when we're looking when we're looking at the um, the sec three. Um, when we're looking at the um, the integrative process. So notice it's the same thing, but they just added a sentence uh, to it. The learning situation may be purely mathematical or based on everyday event. Before we would like, they would like look at learning situation that could be unreal if you want, or or, or like more like um, uh, fantasy if you want. But now the the ministry they wanted to bring it more uh, authentic. Authentic. So there's a lot of changes in the scenarios that you'll notice more and more. Um, also, when we're looking again in secondary three, um, when we're looking at examination number of part and section procedure, noting before that there was no exceptions on uh, the two part of the examination has to be done simultaneously. Now, that lovely little sentence threw everyone off bearing exceptional circumstances. 
that was added. And honestly, I do not want to tackle the special circumstances because that's going to open a whole door that I don't think I have enough knowledge to back up. But that was added. And this is something you could bring up if needed. Okay. So if we take a look also uh, in secondary three, when we, we, when we, for us, like for teachers to know the difference between old exams and new exams. And this is a problem that I noticed across the province. Some schools, they don't update their exams. If you have, you administer exam, this is a little trick. If you administer exams to your students where you have four situational problems and many, many um, essential knowledge questions, these are old exams. The new format the ministry decided to take the exams, the mathematical exam is actually the formula of, of three tasks and four um, uh, for, uh, for essential knowledge questions. And one thing you'll notice, which we're gonna talk about a bit later, is some of the essential knowledge, because they're, for, they're moving into from application to actually justification. You may find actually short answer question with justification where they get um, the, the marking moved up. Some essential knowledge question moves up to some of them might be six points versus before was like two, three, one point, whatever it is. So some question in the essential knowledge, you may start seeing explained. So there is a movement towards that. Uh, notice also uh, in the authorized material, before we, we talked about uh, scientific calculators, but they added specifically, there is now scientific calculator, and I wanna bring your attention to that, some scientific calculator with computer algebra systems. So you have to be very, very vigilant that you wanna look for only scientific calculator, like um, for graphic display calculator. But just to be sure, whenever you, 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 you have students that come in with, uh, with scientific calculators, just make sure you reset, okay? Because if they're, they have time to program your calculator while doing the exam, then they deserve to have access to these programs, right? Because these exams are pretty tedious. Um, and also a notice here was added rough paper before the, the students was not allowed. Now they're allowed. As long as the teacher sees it, checks it, of course, and put their initial, you find your own system to make sure that in case they wanna bring their own rough papers and go ahead, you know? Um, uh, in terms of assessment, notice now we moved from excellent, very good, good, weak, and very weak because, you know, it was uh, to advanced, thorough, acceptable, partial, and minimum. And also, uh, this is a statement that my that driving a lot of our teachers a bit um, in a very uncomfortable zone. You need to tell your student that if they do one out of the three tasks, it's an automatic failure. And that is mainly, this is, a, this is a big, big deal. And again, this, this parentheses, maybe we may have to remove it. I heard through the grapevine, there was so much people being upset with that sentence that it's potentially might be removed, but for the moment it's not, but potentially might be removed. So my advice, just correct with these rubrics very well, but just remind your students that they need to do more than one. And the idea behind it is when you're, you're giving a judgment, you're making a judgment about a competency, you need three observation or a minimum of two observation. So if I give you an example, if I stand outside and I look at the sky today at seven o'clock and I see a star, maybe a fluke. If I come back tomorrow and I look at seven o'clock and I look in the sky and I see the star there, I'm starting to see a pattern. A third night, I see the start. Now I have, I have actually, uh, <laughs> I have proof that this is actually real. So this is the same idea. So when we're evaluating competency, we're evaluating at a competency based on observation. So we need to have more than one observation to be able to 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 make a, a good judgment if the students was able to like like to to be successful in the competency. So that's why. 
So just remind your student, please, this is something that if they just did one, it's unfortunate, but you know, um, that's, that's, that's the main thing on this one, which I thought would be a, a big deal. So again, on certain diagrams, there's question marks. They're gonna, they, uh, in the BIM exam, just, just like a little summary for the BIM test to let you know. So on some diagrams, sometimes there's question marks to help the student out. These got removed. So the students have to recognize where's the issue. So um, also again, and the context have been added to several tasks, you know, uh, some contexts were too directive. Now they removed some, so it becomes more implicit. So there's a lot of like figuring out what's the problem. So that's why they got a bit more complicated that way. Um, they removed uh, the students in 3053. There's no longer a manipulation of an equation. So now it's a straight equation, you know, so equality. Uh, again, just remember also uh, there's no formula sheet. So you all know that they have to have their memory aids. So please check certain prior knowledge formulas that they need to know, like areas, volume, stuff to make sure that they have it on their cheat sheets, right? So major changes, not much, except few, you know, but uh, just to make sure that uh, maybe literacy tricks are in there. Uh, notice over here, when we get to 4173, uh, an equivalent uh, equivalent figure got removed, right? Uh, so there's some stuff that got changed. Uh, over here, when we're looking at uh, modeling, notice over here in the twenty uh, in the twenty seventeen for similar and congruent uh, figures, they had a very short definition. Now they went into a more detail because they want to elaborate it. So that's where actually um, equivalent figures going to be evaluated. So you'll notice they actually extended the, the explanation. Just to let you know now, 4273, that's one of the main transformation um, and equivalent figure that's going to be tested there. Uh, again, if you take a look here, when we say finding measures, notice the way they were just describing it. In this course, equivalent is studied in terms of length, area, and volume. Now notice over here, we're talking about capacities, you know? So we added a bit more dimension to it. So here, these unknown measurements are found by applying properties of congruent, similar and equivalent figure. The other relation associated with equivalent figures are listed in the principal tables. So you know the principles, they increase the principal tables. That's, that's what I'm gonna show you after too, okay? And this specific knowledge was being tested before in the 50, uh, 5173, now it moved down to 4273. So the old exams, you know, had this kind of testing, now it moved up, moved down. Uh, when we're talking about geometric principles, you remember before we had 16, now they increased it by five. So we have 21, okay? And these are the added one. So now we're talking about anything that deals with um, with similar uh, or equivalent uh, figures. So this is given to your students. So for you, just to make sure that they have them from the day one. So when they're practicing for proofs that they're, they're familiar with, they're gonna be having in there. So far, so good. Any questions? We're good? Okay. Um, other things? Again, like if you take a look at the DED, they are a couple of uh, paragraphs just to talk about, again, now how to administer exams. Like here, uh, they added this, since the development of evaluation instrument for this course is the responsibility of the ministry, the minister examination must be administered and marked in accordance with the instruction of the ministry and examination and the marking guide. And this is an issue that the ministry had found that a lot of teachers kind of disregard the, the, the marking guides. So they added this as a legal statement, just to let you know, to make you aware. At no time may the ministerial prototype examination produced by the ministry be used as an evaluation to support learning or as a classroom practice exercise. 
is to make sure these exams are super expensive and they shouldn't be leaked or simulated <laughs> at, at best. So again, just to go over again for the 4273, the new format coming back, what changes, three tasks, four applications for, for essential knowledge. So it's just for you to know that these are, these are the main, main changes. And also when we're looking at uh, for information gathering tools, uh, they added a note here saying a list of mathematical formula and a list of geometric principle are included in the appendix as well as the adult booklet. So for the SEC 4 4273, there is a formula sheet and there's principle guides, which you guys already know, but the students are allowed to, 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 to practice with these documents. So if, if you don't, you could, okay, this is again, off maybe record. If depends on every centers and every comfort of every center, you may rewrite it on another piece of paper and give it to your student because this is public knowledge. It's not like, it's not exclusive to the exam. This is formal, a set of formulas that your students should be aware that, you know, that they'll get. And the first time they see these formulas, and I mean it like you all know, if we use A, for example, and on the, and on the exam we use X, it's the same variable, it's just the variant variable, that's, it's an obstacle for our students. So using what's used in an examination to make sure that they recognize the formula is necessary in this case. Again, notice over here, if we take a look at the 5173, notice all the geometric transformation. Now they're not there anymore. They moved down to 4273. So there's a big, there's a big chunk that moved out, moved down. Unless you're, you're teaching the TS, the, the technical science, the 63, then you'll find them still there, the 63. But the, 50, the 73 is not there anymore. It went down to the 4273 just to let you know. Now, in, in term, again, the, uh, the 5173, when we're talking about the geometry, the conics, notice how we are uh, here very open to, to uh, there's no direction in term when we're talking about parabola, circle, ellipse, and hyperbola. Here, they're very specific to where they want them. They want it more central. Again, this is beginning, right? With the parabola, center of the origin, and translate it. Circle, center of the origin. Ellipse center of the origin, hyperbola center of the origin. So these are very specific. They wanted just to do an introduction to these topics. Now, when we look at trigonometry in the 5171, notice over here, we're talking about at this point, again, notice a lot more detail. They want it specifically like arc and angle and only in radians, right? And uh, find coordinates. And notice over here, manipulating simple trigonometric expression using definition. So where they're looking more on understanding, do they know how it's being applied? Uh, again, for the 5173, here we're talking before we had two integrative processes describing geometric loci and uh, representing them uh, graphically and using vector to general geometry. And you need to have both processes. If you use one in the task, the other one in the, you know, in the in the um, in the application section. Now, notice we added a third. This is interesting. That's that's an interesting one. Describing an object or a physical space and representing in two and three D, which before we didn't have. So now we're looking at the fifty one seventy three. We're looking into a plane and three-dimensional space, okay? Then of course the other stuff stays the same, right? Now notice over here what's what they added to kind of expand. These learning situation must involve at least one of these integrative processes so you could have situation on one, but there must be a sufficient variety of learning situation to cover all three. So there will be in all the versions, they'll be evaluated on all three. So, okay. And again, everything has to be in real life relevant, not hypothetical. So the same thing over here in the 5173, notice that you have um, uh, the vector section. That one was different, just to let you know. Notice in your, in your program, when you're looking at the vector section over here, 
it's not developed here, they start giving a bit more, they're, they're being more like um, uh, narrowed and with examples. So they're very specific on what they want them to know. Okay. So it's not, there's no open for interpretation. So they want them to, 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 to be, to be more targeted. And uh, for the 5173, of course, and of course is expectation, there is not much for the context two, basic context two. However, in, uh, now they're really being a bit more directive in this case. So like we say, it's mainly conics. We're looking more at the conics section, right? So to describe and represent physical space, the learner must produce drawing, plan, graph, using complex figures, that can be broken down into all types of triangles. They identify the key elements in mathematical language. So they need to you know, use vocabulary, of course. In addition, they apply newly acquired mathematical knowledge such as conic and vectors, okay? To determine the unknown measurements. So they really want, notice the 5173 is really targeting the conics, the conic section, which before was kind of a transformation, geometric transformation. Now, the other thing is also for the 5173, notice over here when we're talking about the prescribed knowledge, uh, there's, a stuff, there's a whole section got removed, like we said. Now the, the geometric transformation got removed, like you, I just mentioned earlier, and got put in the 4273. Um, well, notice they just added a few other things uh, for the 5173 in terms of the unit circle. They added the arcs and the angles. Again, in radian, finding coordinate of a point associated with important angles. So that's another thing that they added. In terms of vectors, determining the coordinate of a point of division. So this wasn't there before and now it just got added to it. So these are all few little things just for you to know that these will be, you'll be seeing in their, the newer exams. Um, in terms of the 5173, also like in terms of gathering uh, tool, uh, information gathering tool, notice that now, again, they're saying that there's a list of mathematical formal list geometric principles that are included in the appendix. Again, so your students should be able to, to look at the formal and the principle ahead of time to and practice with them during class and their learning. So they, 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 they'll be familiar when they get to the exam. Okay. So in terms of the evaluation, uh, as a general rule, I don't know how it is in your classes, but these are recommendations, like to give the students sometimes just an instruction to round the final result to the nearest hundred because it's not written anywhere, you know, unless you guys already have set them up for, you know, a system. So this remind them these, these help. Uh, reset all programmable calculator for exams. So, and make sure that it's not the time for you or them to learn a programmable calculator in exams and that to have their cal, well, I mean, I mean, I'm talking to math teachers that know this, but sometimes as a student needs to hear this more, um, students are reminded that they, they will fail if they don't come, if they complete only one task. That's a big, big change, right? For the 40, uh, 4273. So when they say the demonstrate that task has been changed to an explicit six point question. So just to tell you, these are like huge changes and this is where they get their marks, right? They're, they're like their grade. Uh, for the task, the importance of reading, of course, and decoding, this is all these tricks, literacy tricks that must be put into place, right? Um, the adult must be able to place uh, information on diagram and sketch it. So now it's not just like take information and apply it, but actually setting up the problem. Of course, the, the second uh, competency. And um, in 5173, there's a complete modification of the proof and um, modification of the proof and modification to the marking instruction. And I use that very, very conical because they're going in that direction, right? So that being said, um, this is the main, main changes when it, came, when it comes to the DEDs. Uh, oui, Richard, merci. 
So um, for you guys, I'm going to give you the PDF of this presentation if you want to go back after and pick up some stuff. So I'll share it with you. And I'll be putting it also for the other CPs on with the, we'll, we'll share with the CPs too for, for them to tell you their, uh, their teachers. But these, uh, these are like minute changes, but big changes in the same time. So just for you to be aware. Um, that's for this. Uh, the other thing that we would like to share with you, I don't know if you have any questions, any comments, how you find so far things with the new exams, any issues you're, you're, you're seeing. I can tell you, I can tell you from my side, I, I, I receive a lot, a lot of complaints for the secondary three. The four, less, but the secondary three, there's major, major challenges. But from also what I heard, BIM is kind of reformatting all their exams, just to let you know, because the DED came out after that they've kind of published their exam. So there's major modifications to be done and they're gonna be taking that in consideration. So you may see a, a version B and a C of whatever you have for BIM secondary three. So keep an eye for that. Uh, and, and I'm sure whenever there is any update on these newer version of these exams, uh, we will be letting you know in our, well, in the news, uh, newspaper, but the, the CP should be also be also told. So if you don't get the information, if you don't have a CP in your school, keep an eye on the uh, newsletter. That's, that's the best way. And also, I would recommend also to, to register to BIM's site too, to get their update too, just, you know, as a backup, you know, so you'll, uh, you'll, you'll get the information in any way possible. And if you have any issue, like, or you're not sure you can, you all have my phone number anyways at this point, right? So you can contact me and let me know and I'll, I'll give you the updates. So, but go through your CP first because they're your local uh, North Star and then I am secondary. Um, that being said, uh, I wanna also share with you some stuff. Um, whoever's teaching biology, there is the first exam available. So please ask your uh, consultant there are there there is the first uh, the biology first uh, biology exam that's locally made is ready to go the second one isn't being in the process to be worked upon and hopefully we're trying to aim for june or even prior to june for it so that's for bio um in terms of the ccbe i am super happy that jessica's here for that because uh, we will uh, talk about uh, that project. It's just to give, we, you know, we, we wanna share with you what we had in mind and what's coming up and to give us some feedback. So please, we're open where we already have a template. We were like working hard on this. We, we're still midway that we could adjust if there's any, uh, any comments or any updates uh, or, you know, recommendation on it. So um, the whole the whole idea that we were um, the whole idea of the CCB project that we were putting together and please Jessica interfere whenever you want is that we know there are students from secondary one to secondary five having difficulties with math and they have whole gaps in learning right so we decided to take the CCB as an opportunity to build materials that they could be used from one to five to kind of fill in a need, a catching up need, right? So Jessica put this lovely, lovely, genially a visual that maybe if you want, you could share and, and explain uh, what we had in mind to do. So just to let you know, we made a progression of learning directly from the program. So this is everything that we have is directly out from the program. And it looks like this. So it's very bland. And it's one topic after the other. And this progression of learning starts from literacy all the way to, well, we kept it just up to secondary uh, two, I think, right? If I'm not mistaken. I don't, and remember. I don't remember exactly. We've been looking at this for too long. And, and from here, notice the way it was designed that every topic in the progression of learning that you have over here 
we wanted to make it live. And how we want to make it live is by having almost what, like uh, an exercise, like a sheet, like a review sheet, uh, where you have uh, the information, a video, uh, an activity, and an exit ticket. And all these exit tickets will be put together, compiled in a test, right? So you as a teacher who's teaching multi-levels will give that test to your students and where he fills, it will be linked to a paper like that where he has to go back and review where he made a mistake. So once they're done, they do it again, they pass the little quiz and it comes back. So this is the format, if I'm not mistaken, right? So Jessica, I'll let you talk about it. So we're planning to have kind of mini standalone lessons each. And we have a template where we're going to start with I can statements to make sure our teaching are always targeted. Uh, vocabulary corners, list of prior knowledge, just so that if they are having trouble here, we can hopefully identify what they're missing and look for the lesson before that. And we decide to have the end of lesson evaluation at the beginning. So if the student do have some prior knowledge, if they can do this, they, can, they don't have to do this part of the lessons in a sense. And, and then we have the actual instructions that could be in word form uh, or in YouTube, like videos or in other interactive manners. So it depends on who made this particular lessons actually. And follow with exercise and always with a, a place where the student can reflect what they learn, if they feel confident with what they learned and describe the lessons in their own words, et cetera. And so that's the, the overall template we have. And we are now just kind of filling it up for sec one, right? The 1101 and 1102. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and just to let you know, notice that the second part, we added it up and we thought it was very, very important because remember math is one of the areas that students struggles the most for math anxiety, right? So most of their experiences linked to how they feel. So after going through a lesson, we're trying to switch that feeling. Like, okay, I hated math, but now after doing this, now I feel okay. And this is just an indicating, not to an indication. And we were hoping to, to see like, sometimes they may not like it at the beginning and maybe they move up a number or they move up a face, whatever it is. And that there's a change. So confidence, it's like almost like, uh, being able to kind of pick up data on how, you know, they progress, right? And, and the fact that they synthesize, we're teaching them also how to study. We're trying to do two things in one. This is a multidimensional way we thought about it. Uh, it's teaching them how to study, uh, teaching them how to change their feeling about it, to identify how they feel about it. And, 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 if you're good at it, you don't have to do it. So let's bank on what we're good at and let's work on what we need. And maybe to show you, right, we do have it per course code, but they are split into different lessons. So the idea is if someone is taking this course code, they can dra drag the whole, le every lesson and turn it into kind of like a standalone course pack. Mm -hmm. So you can just get them to go through everything so they can do the exam. Or if you have students that are doing SAC four but forget stuff, then you can only you can pick up individual lessons as well. Yeah. yeah. And 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 I think the, the the part that I'm like the most most proud of, well, actually I'm like just a visual learner, right? So uh, the geniali part that I would like to uh, like that I'm actually super excited to show. Uh, I, I I'm gonna show what Jessica did really. <laughs> Her, her creative side is amazing. So, I'll so I, uh, Michelin introduced me to Junior Lee, and I turned her progression of learning into 
uh, what I call manageable bite size because that progression learning was just pages upon pages of things. So I separated into our usual course code, even though we are only focusing on the SEC one and SEC two. So for each course code, I try to break it down into chapter, so to speak, and for each topic to say what it is, like rational numbers, and also a list of prior knowledge. So this is coming exactly from the progression of learning. And I just kind of pre putting it in a prettier form. And I have that for each course code from SEC 1 all the way to SEC 4, which is when our, usually when our students stop because that's enough for graduations. And it's still a work in progress. So you can see RE doesn't stand for anything. I don't know what that is. Yeah. And, and just to let you know, this is very, very, very important for someone who's a visual learner that they know I'm here and I need to go here. An overview of the whole course and an overview until sec four. So, and they were trying hopefully to help them see that what you're learning here, it's coming back here and here and here. So the linking is a visual linking. And this is, we assume that a lot of people are able to do this, but unfortunately we even notice also some teachers they have been teaching only CCBE forever and they never seen the DBE. They don't see what they're doing anywhere else right so, or this is as much useful for the teacher as for the students so this can be presented for the students that say look you're here this is what you have to do you know to get to here but again if the student needs to see it not for everybody some student may get overwhelmed some student may see a beginning and end like for example me if you give me let's say 1101 and you say you have only nine chapters and this is what it is and this is what you need it's super, I have a goal, nine checklists. Like for me, it makes like almost nine checklists and I'll be ready, right? But this is, you know, there'll be layers to that too, I think. We're gonna be hopefully creating exams. We're gonna like, hopefully we're gonna start asking people else to help us in terms of interactive activities and in terms of content, but we're just lying down the, the, the foundation at this point. Thank goodness for Jessica's skills <laughs> in taking Geniali to the next level. <laughs> and I would just want to say, to see the, the plant growing and flowering. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully yeah. this is what math will do to our students, you know? Yeah, and, and this will be published, hopefully we're aiming for June. So, um, so at least, uh, it'll be a solid, uh, we might uh, combine it with the pre-sec, but we'll see. There's somebody else, there's another group working on the pre-sec right now also, but we'll see if we're gonna combine from the pre-sec all the way to sec two. And uh, maybe next next year, hopefully we'll pick up the DBE from there. We'll see how the, yeah. So I don't know if you have any feedback, comment, I don't know. You guys think looks cool um so like the the supporting resources for each topic you've built a template um i'm wondering is there an opportunity for those to be interactive is that part of the plan maybe it's not just because maybe N not yet Right. I think uh, I think right now we're working more on content and alignment of, of content with the program that mm -hmm. it's already so difficult to comb <laughs> because we're not just taking and it's a big job. In. Yeah, it's not just taking like the topics and plugging them in. It's linking the topics in where it repeats and where it was the addition mm -hmm. to. So it's it's a lot of combing. Yeah. So. Hopefully, uh, yeah, we'll be more, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be serving uh, teachers. So, I don't know. 
So that's that's uh, our main uh, our main uh, what's coming up. Ah, thing. <laughs> It's, uh, I have two wonderful teachers working on it. Like, honestly, they're my superstars. Jessica and Laura, they're like superstars. Uh, we have a team of validation that's being put on the side also for, for, for testing and content too. So yeah, there's, it's a multi-dimensional project. Hopefully <laughs> we'll be able to build on it. This is foundation and it's gonna build up. So, um, France, what do you think is good? Would you like? I mean, with my math help, we have a new um, new place inside. And when they work on one page, at the end of the page, they have um, a place. It's looking like notes, okay. And they take a look on the notes if they know everything they're supposed to understand if not they come to see me it's like a third third method we can use to be sure they are able to understand so like a summary is that it yeah. like a summary okay but yeah and uh we love that we're so exciting when we saw that <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the students are the mo more and more autonomous. Yeah, autonomous. Yeah. Well, the, the whole idea you see with this this thing is to make sure it's short. Everything we do is to make sure that it's short, right? So if it's too long, we lose the students. It has to be short, to the point. It has to be clear. That's why. We're aiming one thing at a time. That's the idea. Yeah. But you notice, like at the beginning, when Jessica said, this is prior learning. So when you do the end, like the, like the, the if you want the pretest from at the beginning and they can't do it, right away, you know, okay, where is the problem? Let me take a look. Prior knowledge and the end is here. Okay. This, this, no, this, this. And notice if there's a pattern of issues so you can go back and like, we're trying to do it as, as in term of diagnostic, I mean, and hopefully with something like that for the secondary one and two, it's not to change so fast. That's not the idea, not to change math help services, not to change it. No, we wanna add something that to help everybody as options. You know, sometimes it's just a different option. Yeah. Another way to learn. Another, look, <laughs> like I said, if, if my student doesn't le learn with me and you have a trick, I'll be the first one at your door <laughs> knocking it. What's your trick, my friend? <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, we want to get them from A to B, right? Yeah. So. Yes. Un esprit de conseiller pédagogique. Puis je me dis, c'est tellement du beau matériel qu'il va falloir vraiment accompagner les profs à l'utiliser euh, à long terme. Tu sais, là, vous l'avez mis euh, en micro, là, vraiment un micro euh, euh, apprentissage. Mais je pense que quand vous allez accompagner les profs, il faut que ça se fasse micro apprentissage aussi, puis que vous ne les lâchez pas de l'année pour que l'année prochaine, ce soit un réflexe. Parce que ça, ils vont comprendre ça, ils vont dire, OK, ils peuvent le mettre sur le coin du bureau, puis c'est terminé. Là. Oh, c'est ouais. tellement du beau stock qu'il faut vraiment, je pense, là, euh, quand vous allez le présenter, faire l'accompagnement, trouver des CP qui vont les accompagner parce que, puis le mettre à long terme, dire, euh, on va, cette année, l'année prochaine, c'est ça qu'on regarde, on regarde juste ça, là, pas autre chose. Ouais. C'est wow. Mais c'est ça l'idée, Richard, c'est que <rire> il y a tellement les mêmes questions qui reviennent toujours à la même, à la même chose. C'est comment utiliser le matériel. It's how to use something, c'est ça. Puis, des fois, we have everything we need. It's just, on est tellement éparpillé, like we're all over the place, and we say, okay, I have to manage students that are different. They're all over the place. I have material that's everywhere, that all over the place. I have to, I think the first step is really to plan. And hopefully a document like that will help you plan. So if you see like 
the way Jessica did it, like, okay, you have seven steps. These are my plan. Like, this is to help the teacher as much as the student. And I'm not talking about teachers like been there for 20 years, but even though the teachers have been there for 20 years, sometimes it's nice to have something easy for once, you know? But for the newer one coming into the age field, you need to organize. And sometimes it's like reading the program, or we don't have a direction, you know? And so I think something like that, I, I truly believe if I was new in the field and this is the first time I'm teaching in age, this would be a godsend or like a gift from, a, from, from me because at least I have a direction. I know I'm here. This is where I have to go. These are the main big topics. This is what they should be doing. This is what they're supposed to know to be able to do this. Now it's up to me how I'm going to go with that, you know? But uh, at least you have an overview, easy way, like a nice, it's an easier overview of the program, nicely, visually beautiful, <laughs> uh, you know, but you're right, you're right. Sometimes it's not adding more, it's working with what we have. That's why, that's why notice also in the age resources website, we kept everything as is the way people know, because I don't want, you know, patterns, you know, accessibility, people like to know what, where to get stuff. They know what to, where they are and they know what they are. But when you start changing too much, sometimes it's not well received because they have already so much going on. So we try to stick to one or two solid projects and 20. <laughs> but thank you, thank you so much. It's a very good idea. But our project, this project is open to anybody who's interested and uh, we keep on growing, but we just felt it's nice to have start small to create a foundation. And then after, hopefully it'll grow. And, uh, you know, yeah. So that's what we have for you, I guess, today. And we wanted to share with you. And uh, of course, uh, you're, you're, you're all gonna be invited eventually to use it and to help. <laughs> but once we, we have at least the first foundation part ready, but merci France for your, your insight, for the, the summary, because that's actually right. It's a nice, uh, you know, maybe it's a nice thing to have maybe a pop-up with like just a little uh, review package or maybe even like, I don't know, flashcards or, but this is like probably step two, step three eventually. But uh, yeah, these are stuff that I'm, I'm keeping note and interactive material eventually, you know, who knows, you know, but uh, th this is, I think we, when we designed this is we designed it with the teacher in mind, really, this is the purpose. This is, this is really how a teacher could get organized and have an overview that from A to Z. I don't know, Jessica, if you want to add anything else. And the, the students don't know how to make a uh, cheat and they don't know how to use it. Mm -hmm. This year, I do a lot of how to create it. And after that, how to use it with their exam pretest. Say, okay, this is a pretest. This is what you're supposed to go. And it's why I structure them so much. They have only one formula that they can use it. Only one. Look, mm -hmm. you cannot use that one. You cannot use that one. Mm -hmm. And it's so more easy. Yeah. But you know what, uh, France, you just brought up a super, super point. Maybe this is something, Jessica, we could even add in our framework. Maybe we could also add tool to help the teacher. So maybe templates on, on cheat sheets. Maybe we could even add like tools because you have curriculum and then you could have tools, right? So maybe this is something we could maybe, you know, add, maybe have a template that you created that we say, you know, uh, France uh, tried this in her classroom and it worked. So maybe teachers who are looking for ideas for templates, Maybe this is something they could look, maybe we could create like a suggestion or tools for suggestion, but that, that will be a bit outside of this, but that could be something we could add maybe when we're gonna put it on the website. Yeah, thank you. That's a good idea. Mia Emily. 
Um, for the, uh, the cheat sheets, that's something we're thinking about. I'm working on a project with a couple of teachers um, for the doing an assignment course, the CST committing to success course. And so we're envisioning that, that a student would be taking the CST course concurrently as they're dealing with taking other courses um, that involve big assignments. And so that was something that one of the teachers brought or one of the consultants brought like helping students break down how to create a cheat sheet. So that's one of the examples that we'll be, we'll be adding to our, our resources. So we'll make sure to <laughs> let you know when that's ready. Yeah. Well, yeah, the CSD courses are super interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's why it would be really nice to, yeah, sometime know what, uh, what's in there and what might be added to, to mm -hmm. uh, kind of be a must, you know, but yeah, For you're sure. right. Yeah. That's cool. We could link it after. Who knows? Yeah. So, all great ideas. So, we're we're not going to keep you long, as promised. It's four forty-five. Thank you so much. Uh, hopefully, we'll gather all these great ideas and we'll 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 bring them down. We'll add them to our 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 project, and you know, it's all our project, not just our project, but it's the province's project to, to get our kids from solid so they could succeed in their future. This is the whole point. It's, you know, that's, thank you for these great ideas. And uh, it's always fun to hear other people talk about other ideas. We can make our things better. Merci and have a beautiful evening. I'm very, very thankful for all of your, for your time and your heart in the right thing.